What up, what up, everyone? Welcome back to Week by Week. Stay consistent. Your boys are on top. So, uh, as my mic falls, um, so we're kind of just waiting on like regular season action at this point. You're, like we've had preseason and it's been cool to watch like Justin Fields ball out. Uh, but of course, Mitchell Trubisky also balled out in preseason. Let's not. Yeah. But um, nah. But for real, uh, Zach Wilson. Had a really good game against the Packers. I don't know the stats off the top of my head. Uh, Trevor Lawrence struggled a little bit. Um, Mac Jones didn't look bad, but Mac Jones just did like the typical New England thing. It was just on a bunch of like short passes and um, Trey Lance had like one like eighty yard bomb, but besides that, wasn't too good. But you know, it's preseason, man. Rookie quarterbacks, uh, they're not going to come out and be Patrick Mahomes from the jump. Yeah. So. Um, we got two topics for y'all today. Um, number one, we're going to hop into playoffpredictors.com, uh, and we're going to talk about our regular season standings and then our playoff brackets and, you know, Super Bowl and all that. And then uh, after that, a little later, we're going to hop into fantasy. Uh, we did do our fantasy draft in uh, our league, Deshaun Watson's Victims. <laughs> Great name. Um, so uh, with that being said, let's start. With the AFC North, now how do you want to do this? Do you want you want me to go and then you go, or yeah, we can do that. All right. So, uh, winning the AFC North, I had, and, and of course, you know, if there's any team you want to talk about, you know, talk about them. Yeah. So, winning the AFC North, I had the Cleveland Browns. Um, a lot of people are probably going to pick the Ravens. Uh, I, I do think the Browns, though, as much as I don't like Baker, I do think the Browns are right there in that contention spot. Like, there is no reason that this team shouldn't at least go to the divisional. Um, and plus, I do think that I do think the AFC North got worse. Uh, I don't think Pittsburgh's as good, and Cincinnati is not still not there yet. So, yeah, it is pretty much a no-brainer for me. Uh, Cleveland finishing twelve and five. I had Baltimore finishing at eleven and six. Uh, so, a very close second place nonetheless. But um, Baltimore still making the playoffs, of course. Um, so Cleveland comes in as my number three seed in the AFC, and Baltimore comes in as my number six seed. Um, so two playoff teams in the AFC North, and uh, you know Baltimore is still going to do Baltimore things. They still have you know an MVP caliber quarterback on their team. Uh, I think they got better actually. Their defense isn't bad. They drafted Odafe away or Jason away, whatever you want to call him, uh, and I think he's a great guy. You know that they if if they can develop him properly, he could be a fine Matt Judon replacement. Uh, still one of the best secondaries in the league. Uh, they upgraded their receiving core a little bit. Uh, Mark Andrews is still one of the better tight ends in the league. Uh, J.K. Dobbins is primed to break out again. So, uh, yeah, 11-6, and six, Baltimore, or break out again, break out better. Uh, Baltimore at 11-6. and six. And then Pittsburgh. Uh, listen, this is going to get some shit. I have Pittsburgh finishing at 6-11. and 11. Oh, shit. I just don't think they have it offensively. And by offensively, I mean the quarterback. Big Ben is holding them back. And as long as Big Ben is their starting quarterback, they're not going to do much. I'm sorry, but that's just how I feel. Um, especially with the Browns getting even better. Um, you know, Baltimore is still Baltimore. And, I mean, even in the AFC in general, Buffalo is only going to get better. New England got better. You know, Tennessee arguably got better. The Chargers are on the come up. So it's like... Teams are getting better in, in, in the AFC, and um, I think their defense is good enough to win them some games, 100%. Um, but as long as Big Ben is their quarterback and their offensive line got terrible. The offensive line's terrible. It is one of the bottom-tier offensive lines in the league. Uh, I said it. I do firmly believe that. 6-11. Uh, and, 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 of course, that could fluctuate. I mean... You know, I wouldn't say all of these predictions are, like, what I actually think the team will do. It's just kind of how the schedule played out. Um, yeah. So, it's like, like, I have, like, let me just use an example real quick. Like, I have, you know, Detroit at 0-17. But, I mean, Detroit will probably more than likely win a game or two. I mean, it's just how the schedule plays out. Um, and then Cincinnati, 5-12, and I think they're getting better. They're just not there yet. So, Agreed. Uh, let me hear your AFC North. So, AFC North, we got the fourth seed, Cleveland Browns, coming in with 12 wins. I absolutely love their roster. They got better. 
And my favorite move by them is actually drafting Jeremiah Owosu Kormoa. Um, love him. I love him as a player. I think he's going to fit out well in Cleveland. And um, as my sixth seed, I got the Baltimore Ravens winning 11 games. Um, amazing secondary. I think J.K. Dobbins is going to have a breakout year. I'm not the biggest fan of Lamar, but, I mean, he's a good quarterback. I just feel like, you know, some people like to put him in a top three, top four discussion. I'll be honest, I'm not there. I'm not there at all. And then I have Pittsburgh going eight and nine. I love their defense. I will say that. Now the corner position's a little weak, but I, I do love Pittsburgh's defense. Now the offense, I can't say the same for Big Ben's old. Um, I love Najee Harris, but let's be honest, that line is not good. They have some decent receivers, you know, Eric Ebron at tight end. I think they're a middle of the pack team, eight and nine. And then I have the Bengals at five and twelve. And it's just like you said, they're on the rise. I like Joe Burrow. I like Jamar Chase. I think the defense is young and upcoming. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, five and twelve. So, uh, moving on to the AFC South, of course. Uh, I have my Titans finishing at twelve and five as the four seed, uh, winning the division, of course. Um, and then, I mean, you know, they added Julio. They drafted Caleb Farley. Uh, they got Janoris Jenkins. They drafted Dylan Radons. Um, you know, you, you hope Derrick Henry is going to be as good as he was last year. Um, you know, but also, you know, that's a big hope because we know running back primes are very short-lived. So, hoping Derrick Henry is, is okay and pending Julio injuries. Of course, we signed Bud Dupree as well to uh, help off the edge. So, I think him and Landry could be a very nice duo. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons is only getting better. Slowly becoming one of the better D-tackles in the league. Um, they have an amazing offensive line. You know, for, for what they do. On paper, it's not amazing, but it's perfect for what they do. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. So, coming in at second in the AFC South, I have the Colts. Um, now, I have the Colts finishing 9-8, and eight, but I wouldn't be surprised if they, went, if they won, like, 10 or 11 games. I just don't think, offensively, they have it. I, I don't. Yes, they have the running back room. But I don't think they have the receivers. Uh, Wentz's health is actually kind of questionable right now. Um, and, of course, that leaves either Jacob Eason or Sam Ellinger. Um, they do have the defense, however. I do think their defense, once again, kind of like Pittsburgh, it's good enough to win them some games. Um, and, I mean, 9-8 and is still a very respectable record. Of course, you can't go exactly 500 anymore with the 17-game season. But they're a team that I could see finishing around 500 or, or maybe like 10 wins. Um <coughs> Jacksonville, I've I've expressed this numerous times. Last year, their roster that that roster is too damn good and young to be a one win team. Um, I do think Trevor Lawrence comes in and immediately. I don't think he's going to immediately be a stud, but I do think he immediately changes the Jacksonville Jaguars a little bit. I have them going uh, five and twelve, which is still an improvement. But I just you know. I don't think that right off the bat they're going to be like an eight or nine win team and, you know, contend for that second spot in the South. And then the Texans, uh, probably going to have no quarterback this year. I guess Tyrod Taylor because Deshaun Watson <laughs> likes to get massages. Um, they still have Brandon Cooks. Uh, I, I, I mean, Brandon Cooks is a stud, I, I, I guess. I'll tell you this. When I, I recorded a rebuild for my main channel the other day, and, you know, like I always want to put like a top, like – you know, the best players from the team in the thumbnail so it gets clicks. Yeah. I was sitting there, I was like, who the fuck can I put for Houston? Because, <laughs> like, so I ended up, I just put, like, Deshaun Watson and then, like, crossed him out because I titled it Moving On from Deshaun Watson. But it's like, who? Like, I mean, yeah, they have Brandon Cooks, but he's not, like, a big name in the league. He's good, and I think nah, he's kind of he, he's, he's underrated. He's solid. But, I mean, it's like, I mean, yeah, they have a good left tackle, I guess. Laramie Tunzel's good. Uh, I mean, Justin Reed. <laughs> yeah, Justin Reed, you know, he's good. Uh, Bernardrick McKinley, I don't even know if they still have him. I um, don't think they do. I, did him and Zach Cunningham both leave? I think Cunningham's I'm, still Zach, there. One of them's in Miami. I just don't know which one it is. It's. is. I'm pretty sure it's McKinley. One's in Miami. I'm just not sure which one. But, uh. So I mean, yeah, the, the Houston Texans—they're—they're—they're uh, they're, they're an NFL team. Yeah, yeah surprisingly. <laughs> All right, let 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 let's hear yourself. 
One thing I got to ask before we get into it. What's your thoughts on Carson Wentz? Do you think he'll be good, average, Listen, below average? It, it would be biased as, uh, of me as a Titans fan to say <laughs> that Wentz couldn't be good because, I'll t- because, I mean, essentially our franchise quarterback was a scrap down in Miami. So, I mean, it'd be biased of me to say that, yeah, just because Wentz has had a couple bad years that he couldn't still be good. Because, uh, I mean, essentially Tannehill was just riding down in Miami, and then look where he is now. He's an all-pro quarterback. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, he got in a, you know, kind of like, like Tannehill. Tannehill got in a system that worked for him perfectly. It's a run-heavy system, but he did show that he has an arm and, you know, he, he can still move and he's still that guy that the Dolphins thought that they were drafting. It's just the Dolphins, he went, you know, he went through so many head coaches and so many coordinators and bad teams. And I don't, I don't see why Wentz couldn't be the guy and, and have a career bounce back, but... Obviously, the Titans fan of me says no. Wentz is not that guy. But I could be wrong. Well, my opinion on him is I think he's solid. You know, I think he'll get the job done. But I, w- I would like to see them go out and get another receiver. Maybe uh, who's the guy on the market? At this point, I don't really know. I don't know either. But, like, just to throw yeah, it out there. This is, <laughs> oh, yeah. This is so, like, unlikely, but let's say Michael Thomas wants out in New Orleans. What if the Colts made a trade for him? I, I think that would be a huge impact on the offense right away. I don't want to talk about it. But anyways, <laughs> going to my standings, I had the Titans winning 12 games, being the number three seed in the playoffs. I had the Colts at 10-7. and seven. I love their defense. I can see I see Wentz being solid. If he stays healthy, that's, that's just my opinion. If he stays healthy, I think they'll – be eight to ten wins, and then I have Jacksonville four and thirteen, a uh, young team. They were not a one a one win team last year. They're on the rise. And then I have the Texans going one and sixteen, and I do want to say this. I think I took a little different approach than you did. I threw in some upsets that I could see, not really just based by the schedule. On, I'll tell you who I had Houston beating. Uh, I had Houston actually winning Week One against Jacksonville. Um. I had them beating the Jets in week 12. And I just had this, like, random upset win in week 9, them beating Miami. I actually just, had them beat the Jets. That's, that's just, like, the, like, that Miami win. I mean, that's just, like, a random win that could very well happen. Yeah. Yeah, I had their one win against the Jets. Uh, just other than that, they're a terrible team. <laughs> they're awful. Um, so, we got next? NFC East? Not so NFC, AFC. NFC. So let's hop into the AFC West, or East, I'm stupid. Um, (laughs) So the Bills are a team that I'm very high on, and I have them getting the number one seed in the the AFC, actually. Okay. Uh, Buffalo finishing at 14-3. and Um, Josh Allen is going to continue to get better. Uh, Their defense is actually kind of insane looking at it. Like, I didn't realize their defense was that damn good. Uh, Their their defense is kind of nuts, though. I mean, really, it's just, you know, young players getting better for them and then their veterans, you know, remaining to be good. Um, and then at second in the East, I had the Patriots. Uh, they are the seventh seed, so I do have them making the playoffs. Um, and I had them going 11-6. and six. Listen, bro, okay. I, that, I think that team is too good on paper to miss the playoffs again. You said the Patriots, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I think the Patriots are really good. Uh, you know, made some great free agency signings. Of course, they drafted Mac Jones, but Cam will more than likely be the week one guy. Um, I I like Cam. I don't think last year was Cam's fault. I, you know, I I have an aunt that actually she lives up in uh, in Boston, and they're big like New or- New England fans. And mm-hmm. apparently, the media up there just they fucking hate Cam. Like they can't stand his ass. I don't know why, but I think New England's an 11-win team. And then Miami, uh, this one is kind of like a, a, a hot take in a way, but I, I do only have Miami winning seven games. Um, I just, with with New England getting better and, you know, the Bills still being the Bills, I just, I don't think they win ten games again. I really don't. I don't think two is the answer. I don't think they have the offensive line. I, I do think their defense is, is young and upcoming and is still really good. Um, but I just, I don't know. Seven seven and ten just felt right. 
And then the Jets, uh, kind of the same situation with the Jaguars, 3-14, and, 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 and the Bengals as well. They're just young and upcoming. Mm-hmm. Made, some, made some great free agency signings, but I don't think it's enough to push them to a, a 500 record or anything. Agreed. So, started off, obviously, I have the Buffalo Bills winning 13 games and finishing with the number two seed. Um, I love the team. I love Tredavious White. I think he is so underrated. Josh Allen, in my opinion, is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I love Stephon Diggs. I mean, the whole team, it, it's sort of just complete. I would like to see him get a better tight end, but I absolutely love their team. Second in the playoffs, or second seed in the playoffs. And next, I have the Dolphins at 8-9. and nine. Um, I will tell you this. I think Tua could be good. No. Could be. I'm just saying, if he would open up his mind more to maybe taking some shots down the field, I, I could see it. I'm not going to say he is. I'm just saying I could see it as a possibility. But it's like you said, I don't see Tua getting the job done. So I have him going 8-9. and nine. I actually really do like their defense as well with Byron Jones, mm-hmm. um, Xavier Howard. I really like the team. And uh, Jalen Phillips, the rookie, I think he was the best oh, in yeah, in this I didn't class. Even mention him, yeah. Emmanuel Ogba enjoyed a nice breakout year. He's just going to get better. Um, I will say this. I also like Javon Holland at safety from Oregon. I love the Javon Holland pick. Uh, I yeah, love I love it. Javon Holland. I think he's going to be an amazing player. But moving on, I have the Patriots going 8 and 9. I like their defense. And this is where I mean, you see a little differently. I'm not big on Cam. I'm not. I don't think I don't think he's got anymore. Like, yeah, you could make a case for both ways, but just like watching him play, I wasn't impressed. I like to call him Skip. Honestly, uh, what, what, what concerns me about New England the most isn't even their quarterback situation. It's the receivers. I'm in the mix of both. I, I like Nelson Aguilar maybe as a low-end two, maybe solid three, and then Kendrick Bourne in the same boat. I mean, there's just no one that's going to make a huge impact. So we have to pause there for a second. But getting back to what I was saying, I like Hunter Henry a lot. I like Johnny a lot. Uh, Johnny Smith from the Titans. I just don't know how those two will be together. That's just my only concern. I think they'll be solid, but um, how much money do they give Johnny? Like five, mm-hmm. four year, four year, forty. You can keep talking, no. and while you're talking, I'll look up his contract. All right. They also brought in Matthew Judon from the uh, Baltimore Ravens. Four I actually year, do like that signing. Thirty-one million is guaranteed. Damn. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I like John Newton. I like Hunter Henry, but I think it was just too much money between the two. Uh, Mac Jones, I like. I think he's a high floor guy, but a low ceiling. I think he'll be solid. Nothing crazy. Um, I would actually like to see them start Mac Jones over Cam Newton. I'm not big on Cam, like I was saying. I'm not big on Cam. I don't know about that one, At all. Yeah, but, yeah, 8-9, and nine, and I have the Jets at 4-13. and 13. Team on the rise brought in some players like Corey Davis, like Carl Lawson. Speaking um, of Corey Davis, I think Corey Davis is gonna go over like twelve hundred yards this year and like eight or, uh, and six, seven, eight touchdowns in that range. I mean, I could see it. I could see Elijah Moore having a Listen, big year bro, as well. I love Corey Davis. I mean, a lot of Titans fans kind of shit on him because of how he he did kind of just quit on us in the playoffs. He he really did. But I think Corey Davis is a hell of a talent that just got kind of misused in Tennessee. I I really do. I agree. I do like um. Corey Davis a lot, actually. And Corey Davis, and I don't I, know how much this means to the Jets, but it meant a lot to us. Corey Davis is one of the better run-blocking receivers in the in the league, if not the best. I know he's a big ran- body dude. I know that's, like, completely random, but, I mean, of course, in Tennessee, you know, I paid attention to it. He is yeah. He is one of the best. I think he actually might be the best run-blocking receiver in the league. I mean, I could see it. I mean, I don't want I mean, he is a- other teams to know what receivers are good run-blockers. I really don't. Yeah, I mean, that's just is what it is. But he's a good run blocker. I watch some Tennessee games as well. He's a big body dude. You know, you throw it up to him for a 50-50 ball. He, there's a good chance he comes down with and it. He reminds me a lot of Allen Robinson. He is so yeah. good after the catch. He's just a playmaker. I mean, he is literally just a great yeah. playmaker. He reminds me of a low-end Allen Robinson. Like, not as good hands. But, like, when it comes to 50-50 balls, mm-hmm. like, not as good. But just, like, the way they play yeah, I guess is what I'm getting at. So, we got AFC West next. So, um, moving on to the West. So, two teams from the West making the playoffs. Uh, Kansas City at 14-3. and three. They're, st- they're still the Chiefs. I mean, we know they're going to win 13 games at least. We know that they're going to probably go to the Super Bowl again. 
I mean, we just we know it's going to happen. Uh, 14 and three, number two seed in the West. Uh, of course, I had Buffalo as my number one seed. Um, they completely revamped their offensive line after that piss poor Super Bowl performance. Um, Clyde Edwards Hilaire is only going to get better. You know, their their defense is their defense is still kind of eh, but Legarius Sneed had a very great year last year, and he's only going to get better. I mean, you know, like I said, they're still the Chiefs. I mean, I don't know how much explaining I have to do about that. Uh, and then the Chargers. I think the Chargers are great. I love the Chargers. I love their team on paper. I love their offense. I love their defense. They also did some revamping to their offensive line, and it's even better. Um, I think Justin Herbert is an absolute stud. And honestly, if you would have told me that while he was at Oregon, I would have called you crazy because I did not like Ju- or, uh, Justin Herbert at Oregon at all. I wasn't big on him either. I did not like Justin Herbert coming into the draft. I thought he was too too reckless with the ball. He's not accurate. Yeah, he's got an arm, but that's literally all. I honestly, that's kind of like how Josh Allen was coming out. I mean, yeah, we knew Josh Allen could had an arm, but that's all he had. I was actually really big on Josh Allen coming out of the draft, but not Justin Herbert. I, just, but I will say this: my mom I didn't did. watch a lot of film on Herbert like I did. With I, didn't, I didn't either. But, I mean, my mind on Herbert has been completely changed. I, I, I love Herbert. Um, and there's another quarterback I want to talk about that my mind's been completely changed on, but he's in the NFC, and we'll talk about him when we, when we get there. So, Denver. Now, Denver is a very interesting team to me. I, I actually kind of want to talk about Denver. Denver has an amazing roster. Denver literally just doesn't. They don't have a good quarterback. Mm-hmm. Denver's roster is amazing. Uh, their, their offensive line is kind of questionable, uh, but I think Noah Fant is one of the most athletically gifted tight ends in the league. Uh, Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon. Of course, Melvin Gordon had some off-the-field issues last year. He got arrested a couple times, I think. Uh, Cortland Sutton is has proven he can be a number one. I think Jerry Judy is just going to get better. Tim Patrick's good. K.J. Hamler's a great fourth guy. Like, th- this team is good, and then their defense is good. Their secondary, I love their I secondary. Think they, I think they have the all-around best secondary in the league. Um, Bryce Callahan, A.J. Boye, uh, Pat Sertan, Kyle Fuller, uh, Justin Simmons, Kareem Jackson. Team also drafted Caden Stearns out of Texas in the fifth round. He I be, love Caden Stearns. He is, a, he is going to be a great Kareem Jackson replacement in a couple of years. I mean, because Kareem Jackson's what, 33, 34? He's 36, 30, uh, 34, 34. Yeah, I mean. He'll be a great Kareem Jackson replacement in a couple years. This team is good. It's just they don't have a quarterback. Um, you know, I would I hate to see Rodgers go to a team I like this, but if Rodgers went to this team. for not taking fields. I really do. I agree. I, I do. And I, and I think they did it banking on, like, maybe they get a year or two of Aaron Rodgers. But do you really take a year? Actually, do, I, I just think, do you really take a year or two of Aaron Rodgers over a, a 15-year career of Justin Fields? I know why they didn't pick him. Why? They, it was actually a leak. The current office said that they weren't big on his medical condition. Of, what, what's it he has called, like epilepsy? Yeah, he has epilepsy. They were, they were worried about it, but it's never affected his football career. It never has. He just has to take a few pills a day, and he's fine. I think it was ludicrous to not take him. Yeah, no, uh, he's had I, this. If they would have taken Justin Fields, I think that's putting him in a better situation than he is with the Bears. And I do think he's in a good situation with the Bears. I really do. I do too. It's but just the team's getting older. I think Denver's a better situation. I agree. But I mean, that Denver. I have them going eight and nine. I don't know if I said that, but Denver should very well be an eleven or twelve win team. They really should be. I mean. How many wins do you have the Chargers getting? 12-5. and five. Okay. And then the Raiders, uh, I have the Raiders finishing last at 5-12. and 12. It feels like every year the Raiders get, like, really hot for, like, two or three weeks, and then, like, they come up to, like, second in the division, and then they just lose, like, four games in a row. I don't think that happens this year. Uh, I have the Raiders only winning one in-division game, I'll be honest. I just don't – I don't – the Raiders don't have the defense. I don't think they have the offense. I mean, yeah, Walt, Waller, Josh Jacobs are cool, but they, they completely misused Josh Jacobs. They completely misused Henry Ruggs last year. Their offensive line got significantly worse. Their defense is still not good. It's the most unexciting defense in the NFL. It really is. Like, there's nothing exciting about it. 
There is no like, stuff player like, on that defense. No, there, I like Max Crosby, but let's be honest, he's not a game changer. Like, is there actually any like like even decent name guy on that defense? I'm trying to think, and um, exactly, <laughs> exactly. They actually called the Bears about trading back for for a uh, Cool Mac. Yeah, that was scary. like actually, like actually, and we hung up on him. Yeah, I don't blame y'all. But uh, yeah, the Raiders at five and twelve. So to start this out, I have the Chiefs taking the one seed in the playoffs, winning fourteen games. It's the Chiefs, uh, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyree Kill. I would like to see McCall Hardman take a step to be that number two receiver with Watkins going to the Ravens. I would like to see uh, Legarius Sneed take another step this year. He was solid last year. I would love to see him take another step this year. Uh, there was someone else I was going to talk about, but maybe he'll. It was a dude for the. Uh, Seahawks have gotten into trouble. Frank Clark? Yeah, the one that got arrested. Yeah. Is he is he gonna play? Uh you can keep talking, I'll look it up. I'll look well up. anyways, you know, I like the defense. It's nothing crazy. I'd say it's a tad above average, but the offense the offense is elite. I think they'll win fourteen games. Now moving on. I'm as big on the Chargers as you are. I love their roster. Justin Herbert is a stud. I think Austin Eckler is an amazing running back. Almost He's a low-end Christian McCaffrey, if that makes sense. Yeah, I guess. He's definitely not as, like, like he's such a great receiving back. He actually had, like, 11 receptions in a game last year. It was crazy. But I have them finishing uh, finishing with 12 wins, being the five-season playoff. He's years in prison. Shit. Dumbass. God damn. I mean, well, anyways, um... Again, same boat in, with you as Denver. I absolutely love their defense. I think their defense is amazing. I Bradley Chubb as well. Top to bottom. I mean, even their pass rush. Vaughn Miller, Bradley Chubb. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, that that's awesome. The secondary, Fuller, like, You think that's Pastor the best all-around secondary in the league, combining corner and all, safety? All around, and especially in-depth, Yes. I mean, because like, they have they have four starting caliber corners on that roster. Sertan, Bryce Callahan, A.J. Boye, and Kyle Fuller. Then they have Justin uh, Simmons, who is arguably the best safety in the league. And then they have uh, Kareem Jackson and Caden Stearns below him. Kareem Jackson's still solid, too. Kareem I mean, Jackson's he's, a hell of a player. He is. He's 34, but he's a hell of a player. I think he's a little bit on the underrated side. I, tr- I truly do. I think some teams that could maybe make a debate for is maybe like New England. Um, Baltimore, uh, Tampa Bay, but they're young. They're not really there yet. But, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just a good – oh, another one's Miami. Miami is, has a really good secondary. I think Miami like I said that earlier. kind of takes them out, though. Cause yeah, I, I agree. But, but, I mean, it's – but New England, yeah, no, you're 100% right. New England definitely I mean, up there. J.C. Jackson, Stephon Gilmore. Who's the other – who's the third corner? I think it's last name Jackson Josh as Jackson. well. Josh Jackson. Uh, is Devin McCourty at Devin safety McC- or Jason? Devin McCourty's at safety. And they have... Uh, Who's their strong safety? Shit. I don't know, because Patrick Chung retired. Oh, it's a, it's a guy out of Alabama. Kyle Duggar. Yes. I love Kyle Duggar. I, I couldn't think of his name, but I knew it was a guy out of Alabama. Well, he I wouldn't say I Alabama, love him, but I like him as a player. I will say that. But Duggar yeah, of, Kyle Duggar came out of Lindor Ryan. I thought he came out of Alabama. I, I thought he was an Alabama safety for some reason. I don't, honestly, I'll be honest. I don't remember where he played at college. I, I just thought remember. he was an Alabama safety, and I, I don't know why. But uh, I love them getting Christian Barmore, by the way. Agreed. 100%. I think Christian Barmore, I think Christian Barmore is a stud. Um, Dante Hightower will be back. But, uh, That's what I got. All right, bro. So G-Gone. Continue with your, uh, NFC West, or your AFC West. Uh, one more thing about the Broncos, and I'll get to the Raiders. Uh, they actually announced Teddy Bridgewater as the starter as the starter today. Oh, they actually um, did. Yeah, uh, I think it's better than, than Drew Lock. I'll say that. I think I Bridgewater think is just solid. Give Drew Lock the the keys this year, and just see if he does anything. I mean, I really do. And if he's terrible, bench him. Here's the thing: I'm I'm not in the front office. I don't know what goes on. Um, I mean, if you see even a little bit of knowledge. Of Drew Lock over Bridgewater, I would give him the keys, but like I said, I don't know what happens there in Denver. But I like Bridgewater better. Um, I think he's like solid. I Nothing think crazy. He's a very solid quarterback. 
he's solid. He's nothing crazy. Uh, don't let his stats in Carolina fool you. He was he was not as bad as they say. No, he wasn't. No. But moving on, I have the Raiders winning seven games. I think they'll be a middle of the pack team. It's like you said that they'll go hot for a couple weeks and then just. Stink. I can't believe the Panthers chose uh, Darnold over him. They traded for Darnold and then traded Bridgewater. I like Darnold a lot. I, I will no, say that I like Darnold, but I can't believe though that Carolina because they're a good team too on paper. Mm-hmm. I can't believe that, and honestly, I didn't realize. Me and you were talking about this. I didn't realize how good their defense was till I looked at it the other day. I absolutely love Brian Burns, but I don't. I don't know, dude. Like, I, I it's kind of crazy to me that they essentially they chose Darnold over Teddy Bridgewater. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of with it. Bridgewater was on a big contract. You got rid of that contract, and you brought in a younger player who's still on his rookie deal. Um, yeah, I'm kind of all for it. I'm kind of all for it. Like I said, I like Teddy B, but I think Sam Darnold could actually be something, like something better. If Plus Sam the money. If isn't good, I actually would love to see Will Greer get some snaps. I would too, but I think P.J. Walker is actually the second straight. Oh, yeah, he's the XFL guy. But... Yeah. But, yeah, Raiders at 17. Uh, do you got anything else to say? Nah. NFC North. All right, so. The Packers. I've told Tyler this numerous times. As long as Aaron Rodgers is there, that division is the Packers. Yeah. Um, Twelve and five. I don't really think there's much to say. I do think that they're going to have some drama this year. And I will say this: I don't have them making the NFC Championship game. I don't either. But they are my third seed in the NFC. Uh, then I have two middle of the road teams: uh, Chicago and Minnesota, both finishing at eight and nine. I I think Minnesota could take over second place in this division. I really do. I do think Minnesota could be like a 10-win team. Minnesota, I like Minnesota. Minnesota's very good. Um, but Chicago, I was. I told Tyler, for me, I don't think Chicago could win like 10 or 11 games this year. I think Chicago is either a 5-win team this year, which they shouldn't be. They're too good to be. Or like a middle-of-the-road team. It all depends on the quarterback play, truly. Yep. Um, and, Detroit, and the offensive line. <laughs> Detroit. Uh, I really shouldn't have to explain this, but I do have them finishing at 0-17, but like I said earlier, they're definitely going to win a game or two in there. Uh, and if I actually get that right, then give me my flowers, bitch. Uh, <laughs> but I, Detroit is terrible. Awful. I don't like goofball, Jared Goofball. <laughs> uh, I do like TJ Hawkinson. I love TJ Hawkinson. And their offensive, I, I do line, love their offensive line isn't bad either. I actually like their offensive line. Frank Ragno uh, is Ragnall, a really Terry good Decker, uh, They drafted Panay Sewell. I like their offensive line. I do too. It's not a bottom tier offensive line at all. Actually, I'd argue because it's of not. their tackle positions and Ragnow trending towards one of the better centers in the league, it's probably close to like a top 12, 13-ish offensive line, if not already in that range. Um, I think it's better than the Rams offensive line. I, I do. I really do. All around. But um, yeah, Detroit at zero and seventeen. I just I, I think Jared Goff throws like twenty picks this year. Yeah, I'm not big on Jared Goff. And their but, defense is terrible. Yeah, defense is awful. Um, but getting to my NFC North predictions, I have the Packers finishing with eleven wins. I could see more, but I see a lot of drama starting out the year, and I could I see them this, maybe kind of. I could see more, but I could also see less because of the drama. I could too. I I don't think Rodgers will play as good as he did last year. I think Rodgers still, think still he'll has be... a hell of a year, but I don't think he has an yeah. MVP year. Nothing like last year. Hell no. Uh, they have a above average defense. Nothing crazy. People like to say that Arius Smith is a top five pass rusher. No. no. Sorry. No. No. J- I will say this though. I think Jair is top two corner I in the league. He's top debatably one. one. I'm right there with him and Ramsey. I can't decide. I'll be honest. I cannot decide. You don't really listen to rap, but there was a line that Drake said. He said, I'm top two and I'm not two. I think Jair's number one. Honestly, I'll I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him. I I think he defends the deeper routes better. But Zadarius Rusher. Zadarius Smith is not better than Khalil Mack. Nor will he ever be. I just want to get that out there. <laughs> Thank you. So, not some packed hard And I don't idiot. think, I want to say this, I don't think Khalil Mack has regressed. Khalil Mack gets triple teamed and held every play. 
Mm -hmm. And they have him dropped in coverage yeah. on 40, 30 percent of the plays. Yeah, no, I am sorry, but Khalil Mack has not regressed. Khalil Mack was misused. He has not. Year, if anything, I think Khalil, if you take Khalil Mack, bro, but I was telling you, I think Khalil Mack has, if you even want to call it a bounce back season, I don't think it's a bounce back season. But the NFL NFL fans have this narrative that Khalil Mack is just not the same player, and he's terrible now. And Darius Smith is better than him, and all these other guys are better than him. To me, Khalil Mack is still the second best defensive player in the NFL, behind, of course, Agreed. Aaron Donald. Uh, Khalil Aaron Mack Donald's has not regressed, and like I said, I, I think Khalil Mack. If you even want to call it a bounce back year, I think Khalil Mack has a, a so called bounce back year next year. But I don't think it's a bounce back year. He has a bounce back year stat wise. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that. Not player wise, bro. And that's the thing: people will look at sacks and be like, "Oh, he didn't go over double digit sacks." And even then, in his so called down year, he had nine and a half, didn't he? Yeah, like, I don't know. They'll, they'll just look at that and be like, "Oh, he didn't, he didn't go over double digit sacks. He's bad. He's washed. He's old." No, like look, if I, shit pisses me off. If I'm not mistaken, he was actually top two or top three in quarterback rushes or like but, but, uh, quarterback but hits. Don't look at that stuff. That's my point. No one looks at. I that. know. And no I, one. I, and I can't blame him. I mean, you know, not not everyone is big as NFL heads as we are. Not everyone. Yeah, is. and they're not Bears fans. Yeah, no, I mean, and I'm not a Bears fan either, but I'm also not stupid. Yep. But, moving on, um, I have the Vikings, actually. Oh, by the way, I have the Packers as a three seed in the NFC. I have the Vikings as a seven seed. Now, I love their defense. I think their defense will be great next year. I think the offense will be above average. I have them winning ten games, going four and two in the division, both Actually, I have the Vikings and Packers split in a game, and I had the Bears and Vikings split in one. I had the Bears and Packers split in a game. I don't I have them sweeping us. <laughs> I, I don't have a lot of faith this year as a Bears fan, but for the upcoming I future, I do. I, I think, I think Fields is the real deal. I think Fields is the real That's deal. That's the quarterback that I wanted to talk about that, has that my opinion, has completely changed. I didn't like Fields too much coming out of, out of, out of college. I can't lie. I really didn't. You know that. I've said it numerous times mm -hmm. on the podcast. And, of course, it's preseason. You can't overreact. But after hearing about some of the stuff he's done in camps, and, you know, he uh, he had, he recorded, like, the highest IQ test of all time for, like, NFL quarterbacks. Of all time. Beat Peyton uh, Manning. And then, of course, he had, you know, he's played good in the preseason. I think Fields is that guy. I, I Fields is going to break that Ohio State quarterback curse. Which I think, this man ran a 4-4. I think Haskins should have broken that curse, but Haskins is an idiot. Yeah, he's... Which he's actually done pretty solid in Pittsburgh's preseason games. Tomlin's going to change his ass. Tom, mm -hmm. Tomlin won't put up with that shit. Nah, and I do sorry, like I Tomlin. Love, I love Ron Rivera, but Ron Rivera had cancer. He had other things to worry about. Yeah, hey, he's a more defensive... Well, he got. had other things to worry about, obviously, than than fixing. And, and you know, good thing he, you know, he he no longer has cancer. But uh, yeah, I love Ron Rivera. I, I love him. Uh, but you know, he had other things to worry about than fixing Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. But next, I have my Chicago Bears finishing seven and ten. Um, great defense. I still. I, had him, I, mean. I I love our defense. Um, I still think our offensive line is going to be atrocious. Uh, Tevin, Jenkins Tevin Jenkins will probably be out. The year. Nah, he his expectations are supposed to be back, to be back mid November, but he's a three hundred pound dude getting back surgery. Let's yeah, be honest. That's, that's rough. I could see it being longer, that's but it, it's not. It's not like a Mitchell Schwartz. Honestly, surgery. if y'all actually if y'all are bad, I actually wouldn't hate them just keeping him out just to make sure he's okay. Like a hundred percent. I agree. I agree. I still love the Tevin Jenkins pick. Um, I think he, he's a mauler. He's mean. He looks like a nerd, but he's mean as fuck. Uh, we brought in Jason Peters. I think he's okay. Nothing crazy. We have Ifedi. It's another tackle. He's below average. Average. Uh, one dude I'm really big on is Sam Muster, uh, center. Uh, Madden absolutely. Yeah, he got di he got hoed. He literally got hoed. He did. I mean, I would have gave him like a 74, 73. I think like a seventy one or seven, like like early set, like low seventies is fair. Not like the. The fifty nine or sixty they gave him, sixty four, which yeah. is like criminal. That's Seriously. that's how that just goes to show you that Matt, that like the Madden ratings guys, they don't. Yeah, I actually do love our guard positions, James Daniels and uh, Cody White here. 
both really solid players. I think they'll get the job done. I'm about to say who's your um, center, and we literally just talked about. I'm stupid. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, one dude I just want to talk shit on real quick. Actually, two people. Javon Williams. <laughs> Cut this man. Cut him. I still have yet to see the, the play of. Street. I've still have yet to see the play where he. Like when they came out of the huddle and he just immediately started running a route. I he yet, just ran. I have yet to see it. I'm actually going to look it up right it. now while you're talking. Dude, it's so idiotic. But even then, last year in the wild card round, you know, he drops that wide open, perfect pass by Trubisky that I've yeah, never that's seen the best before. Pass of Trubisky's career. I know, and he just dropped it right through his hands. Wide open. Oh my God. Please cut his ass. I beg you. Matt Nagy, Ron Pace, you're hearing this. Cut this man. Cut this motherfucker. Get him off the team. And another dude, old ass Robert Quinn. If you don't give me five, six sacks this year, you're awful. I mean, seriously, how the hell do you go from having 13 sacks to being one of the legit pass rushers? I wouldn't say legit, legit, but I mean, he he was there for Dallas. I mean, he got to the quarterback. Yeah. How the hell are you going to play opposite of Khalil Mack and not get more than two sacks? Like, yes, he had that foot injury last year. Maybe that setting back or, was, yeah, what's foot? you know, he is a speed guy coming off the line. I'm not going to say he's not going to have a bounce back here. I mean, if he could just come in and give me five, six sacks, I'm fucking thrilled at this point. I'm fucking thrilled. I mean, we gave his ass five years, 70 million, 30 million guaranteed. That's one of the worst contracts in the Ryan Pace era. It's awful. But, yeah, enough hating on those two players. I have the Lions finishing at 3-14. and 14. Uh, You know, just threw in some wins maybe against like Cincinnati or something. I like just slower in teams. Um, you know, I maybe threw in a little surprise there or something, but yeah, they suck. Fuck right, Jerry Fair, fair enough. Um, so, uh, in the NFC South, uh, I, I had Tampa Bay winning the division. Uh, number one seed in the NFC as well. 14 and three. I I have a feeling that they're gonna come out of the NFC again, but I really want it to be the Rams. For for Matthew Stafford's sake, but uh, I mean realistically, th- where this Tampa Bay team has no weakness. It doesn't. It's, like there is no weakness that. anywhere. Anywhere. Uh, New Orleans. I had finishing second as the seventh seed, eleven and six. I think Jameis is a stud. Ooh. By the way. A little surprised by the record, but I agree 100%. I, I actually like Davis it. Davis is a stud. Uh, Atlanta. So, are they what up? Are they making the playoffs? Yeah, seventh seed. Okay. Uh, but I will say this. I don't they, – they get wild guarded. But uh, finishing at third in the south, I got Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta doesn't have the defense nor the offensive line to, to contend, and I know they're technically in a win-now mode, but they're just – no. Um, Defense is awful. Five and twelve for Atlanta, and then pr- in last place in the South, I have the Panthers. Damn. Okay. Finishing at four and thirteen. What's your reasoning behind it, Darnold? I, I think Darnold. I like Darnold, but even then, I don't think Darnold is going to come out and like be amazing. I think he could just have like a. A decent resurgence to where he's okay. I don't think he's gonna, you know, go off and be the stud that you know wins them nine, ten games. I, I don't. Now that could also fluctuate. I don't actually think they're gonna finish four and thirteen. Like I said, it's just kind of how the schedule pans out. If they can, mm-hmm. if they, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they won like seven or eight games. I truly wouldn't. I mean, I have them. I'll be honest, I have them right there at six wins. I mean, nothing crazy. Okay, so I like I mean, their defense. Yeah, we're not too far off of each other then. Yeah. I, I was just a little surprised you had them at four. I was expecting like six from you. I, now, uh, I think Darnold has like a solid bounce back, but nothing nothing crazy. Yeah, their offensive line's not great either, is it? I mean, I got it's Taylor Morton. Uh, who's the other guy? They got the center who's good. <laughs> Uh, Matt Matt Paradis, Matt, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, besides those two pieces, the offensive line is really not that good. I mean, I, I'm kind of with you. I could see it taking it like another year or two to maybe to see Darnold like really break out if that's even going to happen. But um, I, I think this is a learning curve for the Panthers this year, just a learning curve. But um, is that all you got for your standings? I'll get to one. Yeah, there was, there's not really much to say about that division. So this, right off. this right here could be the most controversial division. Uh, because I think all three of these top three teams think that they could win the division, and they could. I don't see why they could. I, I didn't say myself. Oh, you didn't? No. Nah, I, I, I can skim through it. Oh, no. I really I, don't have much I heard say. you say Carolina going six wins, and I thought you. My bad. No, nah, it's okay. Um, I have Tampa Bay being the number one seed in the NFC, winning 14 games. Mm-hmm. Logan pretty much covered it. This team has no weaknesses. It's insane. I have the and Saints finishing 9-8. and eight. Tom Brady. Yep. I love Jameis Winston. It's it's still a good football team, but I think it's the same for the Panthers. This is going to be a learning year. Maybe, you know, switch up some things, you know, get rid of some players after the season. It's a learning curve. But I think here after this year or the year after, I think New Orleans is right there back in the playoffs. That's just what I think. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore, they got a uh, really good young corner. Uh, Demario Davis, he's good, but he's older. Uh, Cameron Jordan. I still think he's got some years ahead of him. So, you know, it's a good football team. Um, and one thing I would like to see them do, though, is maybe add another receiver. Because mm-hmm. I don't think Michael Thomas will be there long. And everybody's all hyped on Marquez Callaway. But let's be honest. Is, is he problem. really? I don't, I don't either. I just seen people talking so much good stuff about him. I'm just sitting here thinking, you really think he's going to come in and drop 1,200 yards in his first year? 1,100, maybe even 1,000? No. Like, calm down. <laughs> Who dat? Who dat yeah. nation? <laughs> Carolina, six wins. We pretty much covered them. I have Atlanta winning five games. I hate their defense. Uh, I think Matt Ryan. I just like, don't like uh, their team in general. Their team is kind of gross to me. I love Calvin Ridley. I love Kyle Pitts. Um, I love them. Other than, that, other than that, their team is literally kind of gross to me. Like, I, can't I actually think the Mike Davis signing was a little underrated. I think he can be solid. Because, you know, Mike Davis was actually a stud for Carolina last year. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I hate their defense. It's awful. Who's their other corner from last year? A.J. Terrell? Yeah. He was not good. No, he wasn't. He, he was, was He was not good last year. No, uh, Isaiah, was, I think Isaiah Oliver is their corner number two. That's awful. Isaiah Oliver yeah, is just like an athlete that never developed. Yeah. Now, uh, fuck, who's their ones? Don't they have, like, really good safety I'm not thinking of? Who is it? Oh, no, it, it was Keanu Neal, but he he's signed with the Dallas Cowboys. Now. My bad. Yeah, that's he what I was thinking of, but he's in he, Dallas. He's good when he's healthy, but that's he can't stay healthy. Yeah. I do love the signing for Dallas, though. Mm-hmm. I love Keanu Definitely Neal. him at outside linebacker. Yeah. But uh, I'm ready to move on if you are. Uh, so, moving on to the East. I think all three of these top three teams in the East could win the division. Uh, but winning the division, I have Dallas. 9-8. Uh, and eight. It's so weird how they do this because, like, Dallas is, like, the four seed in this. But that's just because, like, they, they won the division. Their division winner. It's so, yeah. it's so weird. But uh, I think Dak I, – I like Dak. I think Dak's going to come back and be good. I think Zeke has somewhat of a bounce back year. Um, but as much as it, like – like, we know better than anyone, you know, running backs – running back primes are short. And I do think Zeke is somewhat past his prime. I really do. Especially with the way he plays. Uh, and then I have the Giants finishing at 7-10. and 10. Ooh. Uh, I'll say this, actually. I had Washington and New York finishing at 7-10. and 10. But Ooh. I wouldn't be surprised if either one of them won that division over Dallas. I really wouldn't. I will say this. I'm really big on Washington. I'm, I'm really I, big I'm on big Washington. I'm big on their defense. I think their offense will get the job done. I think their but. offense is all right. Uh, McLaurin, Antonio Gibson, who had a solid rookie year. I also signed Curtis Samuel, who I'm really. Uh, that's oh, a really good signing, in my opinion. I think Fitzmagic and is Adam Humphreys. I love Fitzmagic. Um, and then you know I, I do like Logan Thomas as well. Um, mm. but I you know I, I think seven and ten is fair, and like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if either Washington or New York took over that division. I really wouldn't. This is kind of a make or break year for Daniel Jones. Uh. He I'm kinda, not a Daniel Jones fan he, at not, all. I'm not either, but he kind of has no excuse to be bad. Like, none. 
you know, they brought in Kenny Galladay. I mean, that's a hell of a weapon if he stays healthy. Uh, I, I don't hate their defense. Uh, I, I think it's young. I think their defense kind of overperformed a little bit last year, but even with that being said, I still think it's good. Um, and then finishing at bottom in the East, uh, to no one's surprise, is Philadelphia. I had Philadelphia finishing 1-16. in 16. What's your thoughts on Jalen Hurts? I like him. You I do? It's kind of controversial, okay. but I like him. Love Jalen Hurts. I'm not the biggest fan of him. I'll I'm be not honest. saying he's going to be a, a starting quarterback, uh, you know, in the future. But, I mean, I do like him. I think he's okay. I just I, – they don't have the receiving core. I'm sorry. Devontae I mean, if the offensive line stays healthy. To be their number one out the gate. Yeah, and, and I've I got said this Jaylen. numerous times. I don't mean this – like, I don't want him to be a bust. But I think Devontae Smith, of, of the top receivers in this class, so Waddle, Chase, and Smith – I think Devontae Smith has the biggest potential to be a bust just because he's in Philly. Agreed. I mean, I don't think Hurts is bad, but he's definitely not a great thrower. He's Ryan more of a run guy. Tested positive. Wait. Yeah, Ryan Suckup tested positive for COVID, and he spread it to the Titans. Really? Fuck. That's how Vrabel got it, because Vrabel tested positive. Oh, my God. Titans, Titans more COVID trouble. Titans are almost 100% vaccinated. Really? Yeah. I think the only person I who think... won't get it is... Uh, they said that there's a couple people that won't get it. They're not going to name names, of course, but... God, that's annoying. It is. I that mean, is hell, if Brady like... gets it, maybe he'll finally fucking give up and retire. I'm not even a Titans fan. That's annoying. <laughs> yeah, because we went through it last year. We started yeah. the outbreak last year. Bullshit. What was it? Tannehill and a few other people went Tannehill, to this high school. Tannehill and uh, AJ Brown get the bright idea to go to this high school, and I don't know what they did there. Uh, but yeah, they give COVID to ninety nine point nine percent of the Titans organization, and then we gave it to the Steelers, and then the Ravens, and the... <sighs> it was a mess. They almost made us forfeit because we missed two weeks, and remember we came back and we dominated the Bills. Yep. They almost made us forfeit that game. It's crazy. Fucking bullshit, dude. Well, is that all you got for your standings? Fuck COVID. For the East. Anyway. But anyways, I got Washington winning the division. Fuck COVID. With the four seed, winning ten games. I'm really big on Washington, like I said just a second ago. I think their defense will be one of the best in the league. I think Chase Young is the real deal. He is a stud. Um, the Aaron Payne. Uh, fuck, who's the other uh, one? Jer Allen? Allen, something Allen? Jo- no, Jonathan Allen. Uh, Jonathan Allen. Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat. Uh, Dream Matthew or Jared Ryan Davis? Is... Yeah. Bro, that... It, it's... God. It's a good team. I mean, uh, Jared Davis, who they drafted. Is it Jameen or Jared? Jameen. Jared, right? I mean, I, I wasn't. Jets. Yeah, that's right. I'm not. I wasn't too big on the draft pick at the time, but now looking back at it, I, I like think it was a pretty solid pick. I like it. Yeah, I, I do. I like it. It's a good football team. I think. I think the football team just comes down to: is it Fitzpatrick or Fitz Tragic? I, that's what I when, think it comes to. He's not. He's expected to play good, so he's probably going to be ass. Yeah, probably. And if he's ass, I think this team wins six, seven games. Uh, but next, I doubt the Cowboys finishing 8-9. and nine. Um, I absolutely love their offense. Their offense is legit. Dak Prescott's a really good quarterback. The weapons they have are insane with Gallup, Cooper, and C.D. Lamb. But their defense, um, it's not good. It, it's about on the level as a Falcon. Maybe a tad better. Um, I do like the Michael Parsons pick. Um, <laughs> I like Trevon Diggs, who they got last year. I don't Who's like young? Michael Parsons. I like him. Um, it's just the question is, where do you play him? Yeah, that's my main thing. But I think he'll be solid in this league. Not like an all-pro, but I think he'll be solid. But eight and nine. That, I mean, I was debating on like nine, ten wins, but I'll have to see something from their defense this year. Then I have the Giants winning five games. I am not big I on the Giants. I think that's a little bit. I, I mean, you know, you're welcome to your own opinion, but I think that's a little bit too low. I was kind of in the range of like six to seven before I did this, but like as the schedule went on, um, 
I could really see them winning seven games. I'm not saying this is what I think they'll be. Um, I think five wins is their floor, and like eight to nine is their ceiling. Uh, but, you know, as the schedule went on, I just picked teams. They happen to be five wins. I'm not big on Daniel Jones. Their offensive line's not good. You're getting Saquon back, but is he going to stay healthy? They have yeah, good I didn't weapons. Even mention Saquon. I mean, if he comes back even 75% of what he was, they'll probably win six, seven games. They have a good receiving core. Daniel, I'm not saying Daniel Jones is a trash quarterback, I but he's, I think he's below average. I'm saying he, he can run the football. That's it. He can run. Kind of. Which even then, he's not a great runner. Yeah, he can and kind of run. Kind of. And then he trips and falls. Dude, I was, that's what I was thinking about, the clip where he tripped and fell. <laughs> now to their defense. I absolutely love James Bradbury. Um, I think he's one of the top corners in this league. Maybe top seven, top eight. That's actually a good discussion. Where would you rank James Bradbury out of the corners in the league? I'd say... I'd say he's just outside of the top five. But then again, I was like, thinking I'm seven, thinking, eight. Like, can I name five corners better than him? I mean, obviously Jalen, Jalen Ramsey, and J- and uh, Jair. Would you put yeah, Stephon Gilmore? Would you put Xavier Howard over him? No. You would not put Xavier Howard over him. I'm sorry, but no. I like no, Marlon Humphrey a lot. I don't disagree. Uh. Yeah, no. Tre'Davious White, Marlon Humphrey. Trey White's definitely over him. I feel like Trey White's kind of went underrated. I don't know why. He really is. Um, and Phil did him dirty. He is not the ninety fifth best Mar- player in the league. Would you put Marlon Humphrey over him? I would just by a tad. See, I don't know about not by Xavier much. Howard. When I feel like that's a great debate, actually, of who you would rather have. It is. That's a great and debate. Uh, would Would you put Lattimore over him? No, slightly no. I do like might, Lattimore, but he might be like that sixth spot, and I feel like you know we're probably forgetting some like really obvious guy, but yeah, he might be like that sixth spot. I mean, I'm looking at like like there's no guys really in the AFC North besides Marlon Humphrey that you would no guys in the South for damn sure. Uh, in the East, Trey White, Gilmore. I would I would have to agree with Xavier Howard. No Xavier Howard over him. So Trey White and Gilmore, in the West, uh, nobody. Uh, Jair definitely over him. No one else though in that division. In the South, no one in that division. Definitely no one in the East. Well, I mean he's in the East. Uh, then of course in the West. Uh, Jalen Ramsey. So I mean, yeah, I, 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 he might actually be that number six spot. I'm, after going through the teams, I agree. He He's might, a solid he corner. He might be that number six spot, and you could definitely make a debate for top five, most likely. Another dude, uh, Jabril Peppers, and uh, is it Xavier or Xavier McKinney? Xavier, Xavier, right? Xavier. I'm really big on those two. I love Jabril. I think Xavier was a solid pick. Mm-hmm. Solid. I actually loved it. He didn't though. see the field much rookie year, though, did he? he no, was, I think he was hurt. He was hurt. And he was play, they played Logan Ryan at free safety, so he was playing behind Logan yeah. Ryan. But even then, if you put Logan Ryan at the other corner spot, that's a solid See, I think secondary. that's what they need to do now, with especially with signing a Dory Jackson, which I forgot about. They, Man, uh, that's, a, that's actually a really good secondary. Yeah. You're good. All right. Yeah, it cut out there for a second, but we're back. As we said, the Giants have a great secondary. But moving on to the Eagles, um, I don't think they're a good football team. I have them winning three games. Um, not a big Jalen Hurts fan. Devontae Smith is going to have a lot on his shoulders in his rookie season. I need to see Jalen Rager take a step. I think Dallas Goddard is a great tight end. Um, if the offensive line can stay healthy, it's a really good offensive line. Is that uh, Lane Johnson. Free agent? Or is he even on the uh, team? Hey, or, well, like, he's on the team. He is on the team? I would love to see him go to Buffalo. I kind of wouldn't mind to see him in Tennessee. I, I'm really wanting him to go to Buffalo. I think that would be a great fit. But um, that's really all I got for the Eagles and the NFC East. The worst decision in football as a whole. We're going to move on if you are. So, <clears throat> I have three teams from the West making the playoffs. Same. Same. And unfortunately, there is one team that is just the odd man out here. But I will say this. Each team in this division wins at least 11 games. Okay. So I have the Rams as the two seed, and then 
the and then the Niners is the fifth seed, both finishing thirteen and four. I think the Rams, and this is a tough division. I have every team in this division going three and three in division play. Every all four teams. Damn. This is a tough division. This is the toughest division in football this year. It may be in the history of football. This is a very tough division. Um, I mean, the Seahawks are still going to be the Seahawks. They're still probably going to lose in the first round, but it's okay. Uh, the Rams, I've already said it. They're my pick to come out of the NFC. Matthew Stafford is my MVP pick. The Rams are still the Rams. I mean, they're still great. Uh, and then the Niners. Niners are going to have a nice bounce back year off of injury. And uh, I like Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk a lot. Uh, Mostert will be back. Uh, George Kittle is still second best tight end in the league, in my opinion. Nick their defense, Bosa. Their defense is still insane. Uh, Nick Bosa should be coming back, uh, and he should be good. The linebacking core is great. Their D-line is amazing. Secondary can be a little bit questionable. but uh, One person I want to mention, Jason Barrett. Um, oh, yeah, he, I think he bought out last year. He did. I'm really high on him. But um, And then, unfortunately, in this division, the odd team out is the Cardinals. But even with that being said, I have the Cardinals finishing 11-6. and six. I still think the Cardinals are going to be good, and I think Kyler Murray is just going to get better. But it just, you know, it sucks because this division is so good. It, it does suck that they're the odd team out. It, it really is a great division. It's crazy. Um, but, uh, is that all you got? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I have the Rams winning the division with 13 wins, finishing as the second seed in the NFC. They brought in Matthew Stafford, huge upgrade in my opinion over Jared Goff, one of the best defenses in the league, has many weapons in Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, Tyler Higby, even a dude like Van Jefferson I could see having a big year. Um, great team. Uh, Matthew Stafford brings that veteran experience. This is off topic, but Haskins is actually starting in the preseason finale this Friday night. Really? I want to see how he does, yeah. Fields? Fields is starting against the Titans. Oh, God. <laughs> we have yet to allow a team to score a touchdown on us. Hopefully, Fields ends that. No, he won't. We'll see. He's going to we'll be a bust. See. We'll see. I mean, you just said earlier that he's the real deal. I lied. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but next, I have the Seahawks. Okay, now I'm going to talk about this just a little bit. After they picked up Carlos Dunlap, this defense completely changed. Bobby Wagner, Jamal Adams, Carlos Dunlap. Yes, it's not a great defense, but they it took a huge lost step. They also Shaquille Griffin. They did. But even getting back to it, I mean, the way they progressed whenever they brought in Carlos Dunlap as that pass rusher, um, I see this team being good next year. 11 games. Um, like, But like I said, it's a tough division. Like, I don't think the 49ers is an 11-win team once I get to this. And I don't think Cardinals is a 9-win team. But it's it's their this division. That's really what I'm basing this off of. This division is insane. Um, and the, like I just said, I have the 49ers with 11 wins. Amazing defense. Um, I really just have to see how they come back from the injury. I still think they're going to be amazing. Um, but Garoppolo starting, I could see them starting a bit slow. But I think whenever Trey Lance comes in, I think he opens up the offense. Completely opens it up. Because, I mean, let's be honest. Garoppolo and Trey Lance, if we're talking about a mobility standpoint and Kyle Shanahan's offense... That was going to be a lot of bootleg play actions. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't wait to see it. I think Trey Lance just absolutely opens it up. So, like I said, I think they're more than 11 game wins. But, you know, going along with the schedule, you know, just some wins, some losses, especially in a division like this. It's insane. And then I had the odd man out the Cardinals at nine wins. I don't think they're a nine win team if they're not in this division. But getting back to it, this division is so well, I mean, like I, I just said, know. I have all three, all four teams in this division going three and three against division teams. I actually have the Seahawks at two and four, mm. but I, I, I just feel like, you know, watching them against the Cardinals last year, um, the Cardinals actually stacked up better against the Seahawks. But whenever the Seahawks weren't playing, you know, division teams, they actually like kind of balled out. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my reasoning behind it. Well, I wouldn't say balled out, but, you know, played better than against teams like the Rams and the Cardinals. It's just like the offense couldn't get something going. And, you know, I think that changes up this year. Uh, Russ, Russell Wilson, uh, top three quarterback in my opinion, or top four. You can make a case. I think he's a stud. They got DK Metcalf, who I think is a bit overrated, but, you know, he's a good wide receiver. 
uh, Tyler Lockett, who I think is extremely underrated. Uh, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, is David Moore still there? Mm. Or did he go to, where'd he go? No, I think David Moore might still be there. He's either there or Carolina, I think. But even then, he's he's decent. No, he is in Carolina. You're right. Okay. But, any, well, you know, you got those two tight ends. You brought in uh, Gerald Everett mm-hmm. for the Seahawks. You know, I, I think Seahawks, you know, are the fifth seed in the playoffs. Uh, I think they will for sure make the playoffs, but maybe not as, as high as a fifth seed. I could definitely see the 49ers having a better year than them only because of their defense. But, you know, I have the Niners as my sixth seed, and I have the Cardinals as the odd man out, but don't don't let that fool you. They are a deadly team. I could easily see them making the playoffs. I could actually see all four of these teams making the playoffs. I agree. So we ready for playoffs? So, uh, as much as I hate to do this, I'm going to kind of just skim through the playoffs. Uh, I'm, kinda, I'm on limited time right now. Uh, but, because I, I am back in school, if you don't know. So, uh, with my first round buys, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get back to the wild card. So, with my first round buys, uh, I have the Bills and the Buccaneers. They were the one seed in both of their conferences. Uh, and then I had first round matchups in the AFC of the Chargers and Titans, which I had the Titans taking, the Ravens and the Browns, which I had the Browns taking, and then the Patriots and the Chiefs, which I had the Chiefs taking. Uh, and then the NFC. Uh, wild card matchups. I had San Francisco and Dallas. I had San Francisco taking it, uh, and then Green Bay and Seattle. I had Green Bay taking it, and then the Rams and the Saints. I had the Rams taking it. Then moving on to the divisional, um, I had a Browns and Chiefs matchup that I had the Chiefs taking, and then a Titans and Bills matchup that I had the Titans taking. <laughs> And then in the NFC, I had a Green Bay and Rams matchup that I had the Rams taking. And then I had a Niners and Tampa Bay matchup that I had Tampa Bay taking. Then moving on to the conference games, I had a Tennessee and Kansas City uh, AFC championship with Kansas City taking it. And then in the NFC championship, I had the Rams and the Buccaneers that I actually had the Rams taking. Ooh, we got different Super Bowl opponents. So I had a Rams and Chiefs Super Bowl with the Rams winning it all. Oh, okay, okay. Now to mine, in the wild card AFC, I had the fourth seed of Browns versus the fifth seed of Chargers. I had the Browns winning this one. I think they're a better overall team. Then next, I had the seventh seed of Colts and the two seed of Bills. I had the Bills taking. Then I had the six seed of Ravens and the third seed of Titans, and I had the Ravens winning. Just kidding, I had the Titans. I'm just sad that I had the okay, Titans. Okay, it's a okay, joke. Okay, okay. All right, moving on to the NFC. I had the seven seeded Vikings taking on the two seeded Rams. I had the Rams winning this. Uh, the fifth seeded Seahawks versus the fourth seeded Washington football team. I had the Seahawks winning it. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the other way. I actually do like Washington a lot. Then moving on, I had the 49ers and the Packers, and a repeat of almost every year, I have the 49ers winning. Now, moving to the division round, in the AFC, I had the Chiefs and Browns, who actually, I had the Chiefs and the Buccaneers as the buys. I forgot to mention that. But I had the Chiefs coming on top again as a rematch from last year in the AFC Championship game, I believe that was. Yeah. Who is it? Chiefs and Browns. Was that divisional? That was divisional. That was when they, divisional. That was when Andy Reid went gun on, like, fourth and two, and they got it. Yeah. Yeah, and it was the Bills in the championship room. Okay. Now, I had the Bills and the Titans. I'm going to give the slight edge to the Bills here. Um, I love the Titans team. I know you're a Titans fan. I just like the Bills a little bit better on because of the defense. Your mom's You'll, You might have. Okay, fuck you. <laughs> now, moving on to the NFC. I had the two-seeded Rams versus the fifth-seeded Seahawks. I had the Rams winning this one. And I had the 49ers as a sixth seed and the Buccaneers as the one seed with the Buccaneers winning. It's Tom Brady. Simple as that. Now, the ASU Championship game, this is going to surprise a lot of people. So, two rematches from last year with the Chiefs and Browns. Now, this one, the Chiefs and the Bills. I have the Bills coming out on top. I'm really big I on the see Bills. It. I, don't, I don't hate it at all. I, I mean, it's really possible. And then I had the Rams and Buccaneers. And to I be think honest, both I the think the AFC and the NFC are wide open this year. I agree. But I have the Rams and the Buccaneers, both, by the way, in both conferences, the one and two seeds making it. I actually have the Buccaneers winning this one. But, it, I mean, I really went back and forth. I just can't go against Tom Brady. Yeah, it's it's hard. But, to, I mean, 
it, it was very hard for me to pick the Rams. And even with that being said, I'm still not, like, sold on that choice. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. So, I am going to go against Tom Brady. I have the Bills winning the Super Bowl in a really close game. I think Josh Allen just shines. I think Tredavious White has a hell of a game. Even, like, a guy like Matt Milano, uh, Julian Poirier. Um, love the Bills team. I I could see them really being Super Bowl champs. And that's my playoff prediction. Well, with uh, with all that being said, we were going to hop into fantasy this week, but we're over an hour. We're pushing our time. So, unless there's anything else you want to add, um, I think that concludes this episode of Week by Week. So, I don't know, man. Let us know your, uh, your predictions for the regular season, who you think is going to win it all. And uh, with all that being said, peace out.